Hello and welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. Uh, in this section we're going to wrap it all up uh, here, the last few topics we've been talking about when we've been discussing molarity and solutions and concentrations. And uh, in the very beginning of that discussion I mentioned to you that the main reason we care about this is because a lot of chemistry actually happens inside of solution. For instance, in your, in your body when you're making energy from sugar and processing fats and carbohydrates, all of those reactions in your body are happening in the solution of, of the water, in the blood that's in your body, right? So that's where a lot of chemistry naturally takes place. So we talked about concentration, we talked about molarity, we talked about how to do some basic calculations with it. In this section, we're going to finally look at some chemical reactions that take place in solution of some kind, usually at what we call an aqueous solution. Uh, aqueous solution just means water solution, so don't be scared off by that word. It just means some chemistry that takes place within a solution of water. And we're going to solve a few uh, uh, stoichiometry problems, really, that also involve solutions. So what we're doing in this section, just kind of keep the big picture, it's exactly what we did several sections ago when we introduced the concept of stoichiometry. It's looking at a chemical reaction, we know how much stuff we start with, we calculate what we end up with and all of the different ways that we do those calculations with the conversion table that I've been showing you this whole time. It's all the same. The only difference is usually some of these reactants are going to have a concentration, a molarity because they're in a solution. So we're taking what we already know from stoichiometry, we're combining it with what we now know from molarity and we're putting them together. So again, individually you know what the, what the different things are. So if you sat down long enough, you might be able to figure this out on your own. It's not really that new. It's just that we're going to practice it to make sure you understand it. So the easiest way to do it, rather than just talking about it, is to dive into a problem. And I think you'll see that you already do have the tools to do these sorts of problems. So for our reaction today, we're going to have barium chloride, BaCl2. Uh, of course, that's an aqueous solution, so we'll put that in parentheses. Uh, plus... Na2SO4, that's an aqueous solution. Now I don't have enough room to write everything here, so I'm going to put the arrow and I'm going to continue writing underneath. BaSO4, this is a solid, plus 2 NaCl aqueous solution. All right, so here's our chemical reaction that we're dealing with. We have barium chloride. Uh, this is an aqueous solution, so it's dissolved in some sort of, in, in water, that's what aqueous means. We're adding it to uh, Na2SO4, that's also an aqueous solution. And when we do this and the reaction proceeds, we get two products. One of them is sodium chloride in aqueous solution, that just means salt dissolved in the water. This one is BaSO4, this one is a solid. So what it means is that if you actually took both of these liquids, because these are, these are solutions. This is a solution of barium chloride. This is a solution of Vicks. If you mix them together and let them react, then you're going to get some table salt forming in that solution. And you're also going to have a solid coming out. So what it means is this is actually called, uh, when you have a solution reaction and a solid forms, it's called a precipitate. And so you can read about that in your book. We're going to get to lots more problems with that topic. But basically what it means is if you swirl it around and look at it, then some solids will start to settle to the bottom of the test tube. And that solid is this. So sometimes when you mix two solvents together, two, uh, two uh, uh, solutions together, uh, you might actually get a, a solid that forms in the end. And that solid, if it does form, it's called a precipitate and it comes right